As Mark said, I'm going to talk us through the state of the market, sort of where, where we are today uh, and where we see the market going um, with all of your involvement, of course. Um, just putting this briefly into context, uh, you know, Business Renewable Center Canada is working to accelerate the development of this market. And so things like monitoring the state of the market is, is part of the work that we're doing, monitoring and reporting back. Um, coming out of this conference, we'll start our very own Canadian deal tracker as well, too, as we start to have deals rolling in. And so that's a really exciting place to be in. Um, but we're starting from a place where, um, you know, we have some lessons that we can learn from mature markets. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the experience in the states because I think we're lucky to be able to leverage that to help accelerate things um, more quickly in our market. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the state of play of development in Alberta uh, and the potential that we see in Canada and emerging trends going forward. <laughs> So the U.S. market, um, this is just a, a snapshot of what corporate deals have looked like in the U.S. over the last few years. And one of the big things, um, I think that the 2019 year to date is actually even missing some of the most recent deals that have been added. Um, they, uh, Reba needs to almost create an animated live ticker for their <laughs> state of the market these days because it's, uh, it's updating so rapidly. Um, but, uh, but 2018 was really, I think, a breakout year for the market, right? You finished the year with over six gigawatts of deals in the U.S., um, you know, more, more than twice what they'd seen in, in kind of previous years. And so I think they, the U.S. has gone solidly into a mature market stage, right? They know how to make these deals happen. You have a really laundry list of, uh, of different buyer types um, that, are, that are active there. Um, and as far as those buyer types goes, you've also seen a massive diversification of buyers in the states, right? So what started off in 2014 with just a couple of um, a couple of sectors and really a couple of buyers, right? So that big focus on the IT space, um, some of the consumer direct to consumer um, has really uh, spread out quite a bit over the recent years. And you've seen the addition of you know financial players. You've seen a number of industrial players coming into the market. You've seen um, energy coming into the market as well, too. Uh, you know, I think Exxon's deal at the end of last year for 500 megawatts of, of wind in Texas um, is really an interesting data point for us to reflect on here in Canada also. Um, and so seeing how that, that buyer sectors uh, has diversified, I think, gives us a, a picture of, you know, what are the, what are the types of buyers that, that we may see moving forward here um, in Canada. So bringing it back to Canada, um, and you look at Alberta's history with procurement, and I think it's, a, it's an interesting case because we actually have some deals that, um, that go back quite a ways, right? So you know, even as we sit here in Calgary, the, as, as some folks may know, the LRT mm -hmm. is, is powered by wind and a deal that goes back quite a number of years. Um, you know, we have uh, school boards that entered into a deal. We have the, the Brooks Solar Farm under contract with uh, TELUS. And then in recent years and even recent uh, weeks and days, we're seeing an acceleration of that with the, the Claire Schoen Solar deal um, announced recently with TC Energy, as well as the, the deal that we'll hear a little bit more about at uh, Rattlestake Ridge. Um, and so kind of really starting to pick up. Um, and there's some interesting questions there. So clearly, we have the market structure to make this happen, right? That goes back quite a number of years. Um, and yet, there were a few factors that were holding back, I think, the development of this market in a major way. And so some of those were really um, you know, underlying factors around the, the electricity market in the province. So we had a bit of a supply-demand uh, mismatch, you know, pretty oversupplied market for a number of years. Um, there was some uncertainty in, in the more recent times around kind of are we going to a capacity market structure, are we staying with the energy market? Um, so some, some folks kind of looking at this market but thinking maybe I'm better off to wait until some of that uncertainty is, um, is, is kind of solidified. And then we had, I think, also um, some questions or some confusion about, you know, what's the state of renewables as far as cost competitiveness? And so, you know, reflecting when the, the rep announcements came out, um, the Alberta government procurements that took place a couple of years ago, um, you know, there was a lot of surprise around the prices that we were seeing there. And so I think that also um, was sort of slowing the market development down here as, uh, as, as folks were sort of expecting uh, renewables to be more expensive than they, than they turned out to be. Um, 
So the, the flip side of having a market that was, you know, maybe held back from development for, for a few years is that I think looking forwards, we have a market that's really, you know, ready to go, kind of not, not ready to go in a slow way, but ready to go from, you know, almost zero to 100 in, uh, you know, at however fast a, a Tesla can do that, I guess, would be the good analogy. Um, and so a couple of pieces there, you know, we have a lot of projects, right? Again, coming, coming out of the back end of that government procurement, um, looking at ACES connection queue, I mean, obviously not all of these projects will, will necessarily go forwards, but there's a lot of potential there, um, over 10 gigawatts in total. Um, so when you think about this recent project that was, you know, around about 100 megawatts, we have a lot of room, we have a lot of resources out there that are ready to be developed um, that build on that. Um, and I think also interestingly, you see, especially in those earlier project stages, um, a lot of solar that's there as well too. So you know, what was kind of pretty firmly a wind game until quite recent times in uh, in Alberta is starting to shift and and open up. Um, and and that's a similar thing to what we're seeing uh, in the states as well too, as as uh, corporate buyers are starting to look at both wind and solar. Aside from the fact that you know, we've got a lot of projects ready to go, we also have um, seen some of those market conditions that I mentioned kind of turn around, moving from a position of potentially slowing people down to one of accelerating development. Um, and so we have you know, almost six gigawatts of coal that's ready um, and, and gonna be coming offline by 2030. Uh, you know, ASO in their recent forecast uh, is talking about a need for 12 gigawatts overall of new generation uh, by 2039. So there's definitely, we're, you know, we're in a position where there is a need for that demand growth um, and that may well um, you know, dri drive more growth than, than even than we're seeing in some of the markets in the US where we may have had um, you know, less need for, for, uh, for new generation happening. Same time, you know, supply, demand tightening up. Um, and so looking at those forward price curves for electricity, um, those prices are trending upwards again. And so when we're comparing the cost of, uh, you know, locking into a wind or solar project today um, against those forward rising price curves, again, things are, you know, strong, strong um, case for, um, strong economic case uh, for, for things to um, move forward with renewables there. And then finally, you know, that, that, that cost competitive piece, right? So all the while over this past five years that there's been kind of larger and, and uh, more significant deployment of uh, corporate renewables in the US, costs have been falling. Um, and actually the Pemin Institute just released a report recently that was looking at uh, the state of play in Alberta and, and showing really that renewables and, and a clean electricity portfolio um, is the cheapest new generation option. And so we've moved from a, from a time where corporate procurement was about paying you know, a premium to um, be procuring renewables to one where there's sort of a, a dual business case. There's that sustainability piece, um, but there's also the piece in, um, uh, there's also a piece around just the economics of that. Um, and Alberta's market there has, you know, some interesting potential to develop, I think, beyond even what we see in the states, you know, given the large industrial emitter um, carbon price that we do have, right? So I think that, you know, whereas in the U.S. we see most of this development happening um, to meet corporate renewable energy targets, um, you know, I think we will see that type of development happening here, but there's a sort of second stream of development as well where, you know, we may see large emitters that are going into this to meet a, a, a regulated requirement rather than a, um, rather than a corporate level target. Um, and so I think in that sense, you know, it's hard to imagine a market um, actually that's more well positioned than Alberta in terms of both the resources that we have, uh, you know, the demand for power that we have, um, and the buyers across Canada um, that, are, that are able to procure here. So just to kind of get a sense of where folks are in the room, I'm gonna ask you to go back to that same text message uh, chain that you uh, texted to Mark's number just before um, and let us know where are you? You know, are you just learning today about um, where, or just learning today or just starting to learn about where the market is? Um, have you moved on to assessing options? Are you active in the market? Are you actively out, uh, you know, having RFPs in the field or, um, or bidding on projects or, or have you actually signed a deal? Um, so, you know, te text the number that, uh, that corresponds there and um, 
the poll is running and we'll see kind of where folks are in the room. Give, give another minute to move that forward. All right, so we have, um, numbers are just, just kind of coming in, but we have quite a nice range here. Um, you know, we definitely have a few folks uh, in the room that have signed a deal, and that's, that's really exciting. You know, I think this market is, the, the more deals that we see coming through, the more real it becomes to people, obviously. Um, but a lot of people that are, that are already out there and active in the market. Um, and then a number of folks that are, you know, just, just starting to learn and, and figure out what their options are. Um, and so I hope that, Today we're we're able to both learn, you know, from the people that have um, have signed a deal, but also um, learning from people that are that are assessing options. What are the questions that you're asking? What are the things that are um, kind of concerns, or uh, what what kind of um, active uh, active barriers do you see, and and what can we take from um, lessons that have been learned to help overcome them? So it's it's great to have a kind of diverse group of voices in the room now. So as I mentioned, Canada's market is really um, positioned, I think, for active and, and, and rapid growth, right? So we're going to see a lot of projects um, in Alberta um, for load across Canada moving forward. Um, and so we're already starting to think then about kind of what comes next, right? Once you're starting to see those deals flowing in, what are the next kind of things um, that's needed to unlock more demand or to meet the, the needs of buyers today? And so there's four trends that, that we think are really going to be important going forward. Um, and I'll just talk through a little bit about each of them. So the first is aggregation. This is the idea that, you know, not every buyer is maybe in a position or, or ready to buy 100 megawatts. Maybe it's not a good match for their demand. Maybe they uh, actually want to buy 100 megawatts worth, but they don't want to buy it all in, in one project. They want to buy, you know, acro across a few different projects. And so one of the trends, and this is sort of hand in hand with what's developing in the US, is working towards more efficient aggregation. So how do we find uh, ways to bring buyers together? Um, so you have a number of buyers entering into a deal or into a number of deals, and we have some members that are, that are working actively on that. I think a second important trend um, for the market in Canada is more procurement mechanisms. So, you know, we have kind of the gold standard VPPA, this contract for difference, um, that's a great way to transact. But are there other types of procurement mechanisms that meet the demands of what buyers are looking for? You know, do we start to see um, offerings that, uh, that, that present a different kind of level of risk? Um, are there buyers that are looking to buy something that comes, you know, maybe with a little bit less upside, but less potential for downside as well, too? And so where can, um, you know, other players come into the market uh, and start to provide those kind of more sophisticated procurement mechanisms to match the demand? Another one that's really exciting is, is the social impact. So, I mean, obviously there's sort of a very basic clear case to be made around the carbon impact of purchasing renewables, but we know that buyers um, can be looking to meet a lot of other demands going forward um, and, and providing a lot of other positive social impact through their projects. So how can projects be structured to be providing that social impact? Um, I think we have some really exciting examples seeing, for example, the renewable energy procurement that um, took place in Alberta recently with the First Nations involvement. So how can you know, our companies interested in, in entering and in, in purchasing projects that have First Nation um, development as, as part of the uh, value proposition. Um, similarly, you know, other, other questions around, there's obviously scope for really positive impact in rural municipalities um, when these projects are developed, both in terms of jobs that are created, um, kind of additional economic activity that's going on, and then that legacy of, um, uh, of property taxes that, that really can be a very significant contributor to a rural municipality's tax base. And so what are you know, companies in, in the projects that they're looking for and then in the way that they're telling the stories of their investment, what is the social impact that they're looking to achieve um, and how can they articulate that and then how can uh, project developers be bringing projects that, that meet those demands. 
And then finally, that question of opening up additional markets across Canada. So we've talked a lot about Alberta. You know, it's clear this is where we see deals happening. We have the deregulated market here that allows for that today. Um, but we certainly have some other regions, you know, province uh, just next door to us in Saskatchewan, where, um, you know, there's real potential for renewable energy development. They're also phasing out coal. And so, you know, what would it take to start to open up that market as well, too? And that's something that, you know, we're thinking about and think is going to become increasingly important as this as this market grows quickly. So a lot of exciting trends that are ready for leadership in Canada. You know, I think we, we have a lot to learn from what's happened in the US and kind of getting this market going, but we can be real leaders working hand in hand with them um, and, and leading the way on some of these other trends as well too. That's, that's our point of view. I'd love to hear from folks in the room um, what you're most excited about. You know, what evolution would you most like to see occur? Is it that buyer aggregation piece? Is it more procurement mechanisms? Are you interested in what kind of wider social impact you can be having? Or, you know, do you really want to see those additional Canadian markets open up? Um, so again, just in that same text chain, um, no wrong answer. I won't grade, uh, grade you on anything. Um, but, uh, but really curious to see where folks in the room are at with this one. So looks like we have some answers coming in. Um, and again, a, a broad range, um, you know, looks like kind of buyer aggregation procurement mechanisms and, and Canadian markets are all going to be really important parts of, um, of the future here going forwards. Um, also some of that interest in, in the wider social impact as well. Um, so definitely, you know, all areas that we're excited to work on uh, and work with you on going forwards. So that, um, that, that sums up um, kind of where we are with the market here today in Canada and with, with our development in Alberta. Excited to work with you all to, to continue to grow that. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn things over to Mark, who's going to take us through um, a little bit more about you know, how we're going to get there. 